painting, uh, two phases of gait actually during walking, where perhaps there was an episiotomy scar on the right side, the pelvic floor, um, or if there was an abductor strain on the right side. Now, I'm going to tuck this in so you can see what happens with my pelvis all being well. So, the first one is, as people are walking, I'll just walk towards you, you see them loading into their right side, but never coming back to the left. Because as you come back to the left, you stretch the abductor and stretch that pelvic floor. So, anatomy and motion, we call this a shift phase, where the pelvis starts moving across, the abductors decelerate, the, the obliques, the QLs, everything down here decelerates, and the side of the neck with an arm swing. Now, the other one which we, we often see in CMS is, as you've shifted across and you load into that left leg, we would see in the uh, frontal plane of motion here, this right head would just drop. And as it drops, it would also lengthen the abductors of the pelvic floor on that right side. Because of the position this way in the central plane of the pelvis, slightly different front and back to the shift position, but essentially as that hip drops, it lengthens all the tissue from the abductor and all the fascial leg back into the pelvic floor again. So, things which we might see going on with people who come into clinic. Um, because they stay stuck on this right side and never really leave it, um, we start to see compression issues with the right hip, right knee, right foot, where it's always loaded and never gets a chance to fully unload. Other things we might see, because we never unload, this back foot never resupinates, so it always stays a bit flat, so we might see plantar and fascia issues underneath where the floor of the foot gets stressed. Um, moving up, what else might we see? Into the groin. We've got uh, a point into the front of the groin here where we have blood supply coming out through it, nerves, lymphatics, all of that. So if we always stay compressed on this side and never come out of it, we might start to see things like varicose veins down onto the right leg and stuff like that. Um, moving back up again, back issues, um, because the pelvis and the rib cage. If it's always been torsioned in one direction, that's fine, it's going to start getting painful. Um, and as we go back this way, the spine gets a chance to rotate in the opposite direction to the pelvis. So we start getting this opposition going, so that when we settle back down again and stand straight, everything stays level. Um, whereas if we miss half of that, we often see that the body sets up in this kind of rotation the same as gait, which puts a, a torsion and, and uh, the lower back doesn't really love to rotate down into the spine. Coming back even higher, as we step onto the left leg and the right arm swings, we call this flexion. Now, flexion is the same as when you lift your arm overhead, and a lot of time people come in with pain in their shoulder, and every time I lift my hand up here, I get an issue. So, if we chase that back down through the model gait, you see that as we come out of that right leg, Right arm comes up, left arm comes back. So we can feed that into the equation as well, all the way up to the neck and how the neck reacts in different places with the thorax and then tie into this back leg going back, front leg going forwards. Um, 